it looks kind of like a flat line wobble, right? Now, if you superimpose upon that the stock market, which does this, you have flat line and you have upward straight line. Upward straight line is what the Fed has basically done with other central banks by providing money at zero interest rate cheap money to the financial system. That's where it's gone. It has not gone into the real economy. Like, right, that the is real economy value. is um, not the indicator of what's happening with the distribution of this money to a very small percentage of the population, you right. know, the Cantillon effect as we talk about it. Right. And the continuation of this 45 degree angle up in asset prices is by another definition obviously a Ponzi scheme right. in that it, if, if this free money whether Jerome Powell is now becoming bringing the punch bowl back to the party and Jim Cramer didn't throw a fit this time like he did last time or the central banks don't threaten to blow up the economy if they don't get more free money the, the result is a Ponzi scheme but my point about negative interest rates is that this is something that's never been seen before up until recently. It's not unlike a feudal lord or a king going from household to household and demanding tithing or money from the population. It's feudalism. It, this is beyond just bad policy. This is outright confiscation of wealth by an entrenched central bank class that believes that they are doing God's work, as Lloyd Blankfein has said, right? So when people are on the streets like Gilets Jaunes, or the Arab Spring, or Occupy Wall Street, or they're torching down buildings, they're absolutely um, um, justified in doing so, just as they were have been justified in other periods throughout history, where the monarchs disenfranchise the population. The social contract, let me say, in negative interest rates indicate that the social contract is bust. Your thoughts. Right. It, it, well, th there is no social contract between central banks and people, for, for, for one thing. There never was. That, that, all, all the myth behind the creation of this money, the $22 trillion of, of asset purchases that these central banks have done around the world to funnel money into the system through the banks, all of that, even though it was said to be helping the economy and real people never did. In fact, there's greater wealth inequality than there's been before. The participants, yes, the monarchs and the upside of that uh, financial wealth have grown substantially further. And the, what, what the regular people have had to deal with is a crumbling economy, is lack of money for, for social constructive processes. What it has not gotten is infrastructure spending. What it's not gotten is sort of more real jobs or more real stability. Like none of that has happened. Well, so Bill when you look Clinton, around the when world. When Bill Clinton was president, he said he wants to die and come back as the bond market because the bond market has all the real power. So the politicians have abdicated the role of politicians to the financiers. That's been going on for 20 to 30 years. That's, again, this is a situation of a social contract being broken. Right. Okay, and now you can explain it in economic terms or financial terms, but w why are these politicians, particularly in the Democratic side, they're focused on the Russiagate hoax, the complete nonsense, because of their overlords, the defense contractors and the warmongers who pay their bills. Of course, we understand why Rachel Maddow loves war, hates peace, and pushes that illusion, that delusion. But shouldn't they be covering real news, like what's happening in collusion, like we've got an entrenched monarchy that's broken the social contract, and people are justifiably looking for heads to roll? Yeah, and, and, and there are no um, calls, for example, outside of any of those institutions. You don't have people marching in front of the Fed or in front of the Bank of England, you know, asking what happened. Like how how did you create so much money for the, the sort of class of people that already had it? Like like what happened there? Because you didn't make a decision as a central bank to to give strings attached to that money and say you know what this has to go into the real economy. You have to lend it to real people or real businesses. And yes, that's an economic terminology for it. But basically, dividing money created out of nowhere. We're not even dividing at that point tax money. You're, you're literally what the central banks did is created money from nowhere and provided into a financial system that basically floated to the top of that system to people who are already entrenched politically, already entrenched from being like the CEO, like Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase and so forth, Lloyd Blankfein, who became a billionaire after his company committed Goldman Sachs multiple crimes and, and was fined for multiple crimes, did multiple settlements, which meant nothing to them or to his ultimate 
individual bank account um, and, and that continues to go on so going back to what you said about negative interest rates and how that that sort of continues to increase this inequality and, and the general frustration everyone feels looking at it and wondering how it all happened because a normal person on the street isn't thinking about Jerome Powell in in their day-to-day -day life like who is Jerome Powell well he's the guy who's on top of the central banks that's continuing to push forward artificial creation of money for people that already have it and therefore taking it away from people who don't have it and will never get it. Right, so uh, you talk to a thousand people about this and 999 of them, when you explain to them that the central banks are creating free money and causing wealth and income gaps and social unrest, they'll say, well, how do I get free money? Right, that they don't, they don't care about the social contract. They hear about free money. Then when you have MSNBC and CNN pushing the fake Russiagate hoax, that's to create people's obsession over an existential threat that doesn't exist because if they were to stop for a second and say wait a minute actually the real enemy in within is not Russia it's Jerome Powell it's Janet Yellen it's James Kramer it's CNBC it's JP Morgan it's Jamie Dimon okay then that would be a problem because then the social contract would be so obviously broken at that point they do not have the number of police, cops, and military to contain the outrage at that point. Yeah, I, I, I think ultimately, if, if you look at all of those people and institutions you, you mentioned, that, that, that's real. That, that's day-to-day -day stuff going on. Going back to December, Jerome Powell talking with Jamie Dimon, that not being in the news. Why wasn't that in? Why didn't the news, the sort of mainstream media, talk about how we changed in January? Jerome Powell changed how all of a sudden we're going to take money away from the banking system from the markets and now we're going to give it back we were going to make it more expensive to them now we're going to make it cheaper why didn't that story get covered it's, it's it's a very good question and if it did get covered you would have much more economic frustration which ultimately is what's behind a lot of sort of the nationalistic movements and everything that's going on voting wise and so forth throughout the world because people want change they they know there's something economically unfair and they don't know where to point their fingers and and, and it is a problem that publicly we aren't talking about